Hello YouTube, here's Jumak again with another update of our um, Blender for Motion design series. This time it's not a uh, tutorial as you've been following them in the past. Um, it's just uh, like a dissection of the, or a look behind the scenes uh, of the animation that you've seen before this, uh, which was about the touch uh, or scrolling on the, on the touch input devices uh, of GNOME 3. And uh, so let's just quickly go through it. So here's the complete animation um, in the GL preview in Blender. So this is the project. So if I play it back, nothing happens. Okay, there we go. So here we see the finger touching the surface. You have the kinetic scroll that makes the, the page follow through once you release the, uh, the finger off the surface. And so let's break it down. You can see lots of relationships going on, but essentially the scene is just a few uh, objects you have in perspective so we can better see. So we have the camera, we have the base plate, which is just a, a gradient at the back of the page. Once you reach the top, it sort of uh, indicates that you've reached the top by allowing you to, to see a bit of the background and then you know uh, returns back at the end of the animation you can see that uh, you know it goes if I go to here so you can see it it, it goes you know a little bit further than, than the than the top of the page and then returns so that's for that then I have the top uh, which is just a it's the toolbar and the top bar of, of shell as a single a plane and we don't have to deal with any clipping because it's outside of the view where it's full screen so it's easier for us but we already know how to do it within a window with the boolean operations that we showed in one of the previous episodes so that's that and uh, that's essentially it i have an object uh, for the page which is this huge texture which i've created by using one of uh, i don't really recall the name of the uh, the add-on in firefox but it allows you to take a screenshot of the current page uh, and not just the, the the viewport the whole actual the whole page so uh, i found planet gnome to be ideal for mocking up uh, scrolling because it's super super long unfortunately at the beginning there's this ugly logo uh, but uh, I didn't have time to actually fix that up, but uh, it's kind of unfortunate that uh, it takes so much um, Prominent space and it's so horrible. Look at the wheels uh, anyway uh, And then the last thing is the actual point of this whole animation and that's the that's the scroll bar Which is only an overlay for touch devices. So it's an indicator. It's not actually a control that you interact with um, So how did I do that? Well, uh, let's start with the the touch I mean the finger indicator so you want to indicate when the finger is interacting with the surface so I chose to use like this um, ring that when you scale the finger down it just goes like up uh, I think it's a nice indication but uh, what I did or how I did that is really ugly and probably unnecessary I've used the um, uh, constraints. So I have a translation, it's called, I think, yeah, a transformation constraint which allows to uh, sort of um, map an input uh, transformation to some output. You can do it, you know, for ro you can translate rotation to movement or sc scaling to movement, that sort of things. And I just couldn't figure out how to do it inversely. The actually copy location uh, constraint allows you to just invert the direction, that's perfect, but the the scaling doesn't. So making one object scale down while the other one scales up turns out to be pretty difficult. I, I somehow globbed it up by using a, you know, a, a separate object that is hidden. I actually have to, I didn't have to do that, but um, you know, to, to invert the direction, but if I just use translation, you can actually do the negative in, in one. So I've, this is really horrible setup. Do not try to do that. What I would suggest to do, now the whole purpose why we're doing this is that um, when you're doing something more complex, and um, again, this is not complex. And if you compare it to character animation or anything like that, this is just, uh, you know, laughable. But for me, it's still uh, an area where I can make so many errors if I do things manually. 
So if you can avoid creating or having to animate um, too many properties and, and especially when you need to like synchronize between two objects. So if I had these two separate objects and I would scale this one down and scale this one up, that uh, I can screw up pretty, pretty fast. So if you can link the two together so that you only animate one property, that's that's an advantage. So that's what, what I tried to do. And uh, so I used constraints in, in a very ugly manner. So I set up this constraints and then I can animate just one object, you know, it, it scales and the other one follows. But um, you can do it with um, uh, shape keys. Now what shape keys are is uh, you can have a mesh. So you would have one single object, not two, and you can have states of that mesh and animate between them. And the states are called keys, uh, which kind of, you know, whatever. So it's the terminology that, that Blender uses, so I'm gonna follow it. So these are keys, you can find them in, in here in the, in the object, so you can create like these states, the shape keys for each object and then animate between them, which is what I actually did for the scroll bar, if I can select it. I think there's like Alt, uh, but I didn't name it, of course. It's probably plain, yes. So what you did, uh, what I did there was, I Alt right clicked. Uh, so uh, you can um, see that I have the, the base shape, which is the scroll bar as is. And then I have a key, which currently isn't enabled, but if I would have it and one, you can see it's, uh, if you go to edit mode, you can get the key. So uh, this is the base, base form and this is the key. So I wanted to sort of shrink it when you hit the extreme. So this is what, what happens if I go back to object mode. So when we when we go, you can see that the key is actually, you know, totally almost a, a point, I mean, a, a circle, but I only animate to like half of that shape key. So it, it's a blend between the two. So I would suggest you do the same for this. You would just have like two, uh, you would have the ring um, and you would have the circle in the middle and the, you would just blend between the two extremes and it, it sort of morphs between the two two states, the two keys. And you would I mean, animate that. Uh, but I did it with uh, with constraints in a really miserable manner, but it worked. But let's move on to the, to the thing that I've spent most time on. And that's making sure that uh, the thumb stays with the, or the, the finger stays with the surface that it's pushing away. Now, initially, I, uh, I well, I already have some experience, so I knew it's not going to work. But you might think that you can animate that, uh, you know, separately, uh, so that you keyframe both the finger and the surface below it. But the problem is that you have two motions, and um, you would really have to make sure that the that the shapes uh, of the curve really line up, so you don't get any sliding. And that is a that is a point of failure. Um, it's true for you know character animation when you have um, you know feet on a surface when they slide it just looks so unnatural and it and it completely falls apart on that and you really can't do it so uh, it's a matter of somehow locking the, the 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 finger here with the surface and in the past we've used the copy location um, constraint but in here we use uh, child L because we're actually going to be paging. So we have two objects, but they change the um, sort of anchor point through time. So we do it multiple times. So we would have to like have um, some empties and set up really difficult relationships and, and, and switch between the influences and it just wouldn't work. So we can work around that with the child of constraint. Now, we haven't really talked about the parent-child relationships. Just quickly demonstrate it. Uh, you have, uh, uh, let me just add, uh, let me put it here. Well, let's just use, uh, uh, let me do a cube and a um, sphere. So I have two objects that are independent. If I move them, I can move them separately, but I would want this object to follow its parent while being able to animate it individually. I would select the child or to be child and the parent and do control P. And now I have a parent child relationship. If I move the cube, uh, the children would uh, follow it. But if I, I can individually animate the, the child, but it still follows the parent wherever parent is doing, which is kind of what we want here, except that um, we don't want the surface to follow the finger all the time. We want to you know follow it now, and now I release, stop. 
and now they're independent and now I want to follow it and now it's independent now I want to follow it now it's independent so that sort of stuff and that's why the that, that's what the child of um, constraint does because all the constraints have the influence slider so they define how much the the um, object is actually being affected by that constraint and it's animatable so you can see it's not influenced now you know I'm moving the finger and the surface is not following it now I lock it and it does follow it and now I release it there is you know hand animation of the child of the surface here and that's actually what I spent most time on and I'm not even gonna admit how much time I've spent on this but you know it, it really depends on you know how much you move so you've created the motion here and then you know you have to sort of um, figure it out how how much further the surface has to go and also at this point where you're uh, changing the influence from you know it's being influenced and now it isn't there is a room to sort of jump around so you have to be careful here not to have some sort of keyframe interpolation for the child at, at this point so that's like the only place where there's room for error and I still managed to <laughs> spend so much time here and you can still see that uh, it's kind of um, what was it yep. so I think it's here where there's slight Oh, there's no shift here, but in here, yeah, it slightly moves, I think. Yeah, there's like a small shift here, and it, it's like really tiny. Um, you could probably do a vector here. Oh, yeah. No, it's still there, so I don't know. There's just these tiny rooms for error. I actually had to shift here slightly so yeah you, you might need to compensate here slightly but it's still uh, as a final animation it looks kind of decent and the last bit is these the actual slider which again is using um, constraints I'm using the transform constraint not the copy location constraint which does allow to invert the location but as you can see there's you know the the actual page is way longer it's about 20 times longer than the room for the slider so what you do is you uh, so extrapolate so that all these units are in are absolute units but you want to you know have it anywhere and follow follow the motion so you uh, copy location one unit becomes minus uh, 0 0.5 so 5% percent uh, 0.05 um, so every time I move this around, this follows on the opposite direction, and it only does you know a uh, five percent motion of of the original surface. So it's very easy. You don't have to keyframe anything. It follows precisely, and that's why that's why I like uh, using Blender for for these kind of things because you can you know set up the uh, the animation and the, the the actual you know tweaking of the animation is a matter of just a few keys. I mean it looks that there's a lot of keys, but uh, if I just select you know most of the stuff is this. That's the pointer. It's actually just you know uh, there's scale and there's there's movement, but you know most of these keys are actually just duplicates. You know there's just two states. You know pressed and and released. And I just copy them around as we've uh, as I've shown you before the dope sheet is really useful and then there's the, uh, the sort of uh, kinetic scroll uh, you know fall through uh, after releasing the finger every time and that's essentially it all the other stuff is just a matter of having the constraints set up and so I hope you liked it and uh, next time we'll hopefully do the the spinner which will be something that uh, you can follow after again Cheers.